Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw that we could talk about distances to faraway objects like quasars in terms of their recessional velocities or in terms of their redshift, in terms of z. And we understood how to calculate z because we've seen that in the previous video. Now, we can also express the distance to where the object was at the time the radiation that we're currently receiving left the object. Of course, since then, the object has moved much farther away, but at least we can estimate how far the object was at the time the radiation left the object. And so we can, turn, we can talk about it in terms of the time that it was, how long ago did the, did the radiation leave the object, and of course we can then turn that into light years because we know that the speed of light is the speed at which radiation travels towards us. So we call that the look-back time, T sub L, and it tells us how far back in time the event happened. In other words, the radiation that we're currently seeing left the object. Now, we can calculate that in two ways. We can calculate it when z is non-relativistic, when the velocity of the object is so small relative to the speed of light that it has no relativistic effects. And we can say that it's correct for about z being between 0 and 0.2. But once z becomes too large, there's relativ relativity effects, and we have to take those into account. So the equation to calculate the look-back time is calculated via these constants. So these constants are calculated based upon presumptions of four things. The mass equivalent in energy of the universe, so we take all the matter of the universe, including the dark matter, and calculate its equivalent energy. When you calculate the energy, you use E equals mc squared. So take all the mass, multiply times c squared, and that's the energy contained within all the matter of the universe. Then we need the energy contained within all the dark energy. So we estimate that's about 70% of all the energy is dark energy, and about 30% of all the energy is the mass. Of course, it varies depending upon who you talk to and what experiments have done, they've done. And then you calculate all the energy contained within the radiation roaming through the universe, including all the neutrinos. And then you come up with some sort of estimate for the Hubble constant. You plug all that into an equation, and that then calculates these particular coefficients. So then you realize that if z is larger than 0.2, you use this equation right here with these coefficients that come out of these constants. And then, for example, if you plug in the value with z equals 5, that means it's traveling at almost 95% of the speed of light. You plug in the number 5 here and the number 5 there, and you turn the crank with your calculator, you come out to, be, to have 12,500. That's in terms of millions of light years or millions of years. And that means that the event happened 12 and a half billion years ago. In other words, if we receive light that has a redshift z equals 5, then the light left the object 12 and a half billion years ago, presuming all these constants are correct. That then translates to, an, to a distance of 12 and a half billion light years that the object was at the moment the light left. Of course, since at that point the object is moving pretty close to the speed of light and the light has been on its way for 12 and a half billion years, you can imagine that it is now much farther away than it was when the light left us back then. So that is the way we calculate the look back time, which gives us a distance to where the object was when the light left, not when the light uh, not the distance of the object today. It's, of course, much farther away. And then, of course, those numbers are only as correct as we can put in proper values for these four constants. And believe me, it's going to be a while before we get accurate value on all those constants. Hubble constant, we're getting close, but the others, there's still a ways to go. Those are good estimates, but as, as all estimates goes, those are not accurate. And, of course, these coefficients will change depending upon what values you plug in there. But at least it gives you an idea of how else we can talk about distances to faraway objects like quasars in terms of look back time or in terms of where the object was when the light left, not where the object is today. That's why we prefer z, the, the, uh, the redshift, or we prefer v, the recessional velocity, as an indication of how far things are relative to one another. And that is how it's done. Oh, yes, it is. Well, no. It depends who you talk to, right? We have different ways in which it's calculated. We have values anywhere from 69 to 73. This is just 
a value we plugged in there just to come up with these constants. So who came up with those omega constants? Usually teams of ast uh, astronomers that come together, do a bunch of experiments, do a bunch of calculations, and they go, this is the number that we came up with. And then you talk to another group of astronomers that do another experiment, they'll come up with a slightly different value. The, the values typically are around about 0 0.3 for this and about 0 0.7 for that and a very small amount for that. That's, those are the typical values. And yes, the Hubble constant is somewhere between 67 and 73 or 74. Astronomy is not an exact science when it comes to those kind of things. 